So I have this text composition right here and as you can see it has a typing effect animation and if I want to change this animation the only way I can do that is to go inside my text composition and modify these keyframes and then go back to my main composition and see how it looks and so on. But what I really want is to modify those keyframes directly here within this composition. So in order to do that let's go back to my test composition then go to window essential graphics now here make sure you have your composition selected so in my case it's in the text one now let's take this property drag it here uh, you can obviously change its name however you want now you can close this panel let's go back to my main composition and now if i toggle this down i can see my property right here and i can change these keyframes however i want and i can also delete these keyframes from here so now i can modify my animation directly within this main composition wherever you are with your mouse cursor just press the tilde key in order to make the panel full screen without having to click on it or anything else You can pick any color of side after effects by taking the eyedropper tool, then hover over any color you want and then press enter or return. Instead of pressing this button and then fit up to 100%, you can directly press shift and the 4 or slash key. For a quick text typing effect, toggle this down, go to animate, then character offset, then go to add, property, opacity, make opacity 0%, then go to range selector 1, then advanced, make smoothness 0%, put a keyframe on the start property, go couple of frames forward and make it 100% and now you have a text typing effect. Instead of first importing your footage here, you can take your files and drag them directly to your composition and they will be automatically imported. If you want to create color libraries, just search for Adobe Color, click on the first link then you can create your own colors or you can search new ones by going into trends and let's say you like this one and you can add to library then go back to after effects go to windows then go to libraries and as you can see this one is called fashion so i'm going to search here for fashion and you can see i have this library right into after effects you can make an animation feel more sketchy by decreasing its frame rate using the posterize time effect. In this case, I used the frame rate of 8 fps. You can center the anchor point of any layer by holding Ctrl or Command if you're on a Mac and then double clicking on this anchor point tool. In this composition, I have this arrow composition which is composed of the arrow and the square. And I want only the arrow to appear here and not the square. So I can go in my arrow composition, right click on the square layer, make it a guide layer and now if I go back to my main composition I have only the arrow and not the square. If you have a rectangle and you'd want to modify the pet points you'd have to go here first and convert the pet to Bezier pet but a quicker method to do this is to hold alt or option if you're on a Mac, start drawing the rectangle and now the pet is already a Bezier pet and you can start modifying the points right away. If you want to see more compositions side by side, you can just lock the main composition by pressing this lock icon. Now let's open up the bulb composition, let's move it right here and now I can see the compositions side by side and any change I make here it's reflected into the main composition. I have this 3 seconds bulb animation and if I'd want to loop this I'd have to duplicate this layer and then move these layers next to each other and so on but a quicker and better method to do this is to go to my project panel right click on my video and then go to interpret footage main and here I can just loop my video how many times I want so let's say 10 times and now I can extend my layers up to 10 times without having to duplicate it or anything else you can create a folding simulation by going into effects and presets, search for a page turn effect. Now I want the folding uh, to start from the bottom right corner. So I have here the fold position uh, anchor point 
and now I'm going to create a keyframe for default position. Let's press you to reveal the keyframe. Let's go a couple of frames forward. And now I'm going to change this one right here. All right, and now I have a folding simulation just like that. If you want to change the mode of a layer, instead of choosing it from this list every time, you can just press the shift and the plus key. Or if you want to go back, shift and minus key. Instead of using the opacity property on a layer, you can just search for a simple choker effect. And let's use this instead. And in this way, you'll get a more professional look. If I want my text layer to appear only inside this bubble composition, I would have to, uh, to use the track mat option, but I'd have to duplicate this bulb composition and I don't really want to do that. So a better method is to use the set net effect. Make sure you apply it on the text, not on the bulb composition. And I'm going to choose here the bulbs composition, also effects and mask. And now I have uh, the text appearing only inside this bubble. And a uh, quick tip here, let's say this composition is actually smaller, maybe 70%. And now you can see that it's not working anymore. So what you have to do is to check this box right here. And now you can see that the text appears again only inside this bubble. If you have multiple layers and you want to toggle through them, you can use the command and the up arrow key to go up or command and the down arrow key to go down. As a bonus tip, you can use the command and the right arrow key to go one frame forward or command and the left arrow key to go one frame backwards. I have this square swinging around and as you can see it has a lot of keyframes for the position and rotation and I think this movement is a bit too slow in my opinion and I want to speed this up. So in order to do that, uh, select all your keyframes then hold Option or Alt if you're on Windows, then click on this last keyframe and drag this all the way to the left. And now I've shortened the duration between keyframes in just a couple of seconds. So let's say I made this project in Photoshop and I want to bring this over to After Effects to animate it. Well, what you usually do is you save this as an image and then import that image to After Effects. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to import directly the PSD file. So I'm going to choose PS2AE, which is my Photoshop file. Then I'm going to choose footage and for the layer, I'm going to choose my test layer. And now I can just bring this over to my composition. So why would I import this as a Photoshop file instead of an image? Well, if I change my mind and I go back to Photoshop and let's say I want to change the color of the text. I can just change it, then save this file, go back to After Effects, and the change will be automatically reflected here. So that's why it's better to import it as a PSD file instead of an image.